Welcome to how to use a sling psychrometer. Um, both S's, one has an S and one has a PS. You gotta love the English language because you know they just they just borrow from also so many other cultures and languages that it's just fun. But the sling psychrometer, spelled with a PSY psychrometer, like psychology. Uh, so this is going to be how you use a sling psychrometer to measure uh, humidity. So first off, this is what comes in your kit. This is the student kit here. I'll get my little laser pointer on so that we can see what I'm referencing. It's going to come with two thermometers. They should both be in Celsius. So if you've read a thermometer, you've already played with one of these guys. There's going to be a wooden stick that's got a screw in it. Uh, so it's a Phillips head screw that uh, comes out if you can. You're going to have a two rubber bands. There's going to be a wick and then there's going to be a conversion chart. And we'll talk about how to read this crazy thing later on. The first thing we're going to do is you take the screw out of the stick. All right, so there's a you need a Phillips head screwdriver. Just go ahead and back that little thing out, set it off to the side so you don't lose it. I kind of lay out everything that we're going to piece together like this so that we have all our bits. So the screw is out of the stick, two thermometers, a wick, a rubber band. There's another rubber band here, but we just need one right now. Step one is to put the wick over one of the bulbs with being careful not to touch the bulb. We don't want any oil on it. So this is just a little cloth sack that slides on there. Once that sack is on there, take one of the rubber bands and use it to hold it in place. So I usually put the rubber band so it's just above the, the uh, bulb because we want that to stay on the thermometer. The second step is to take the other thermometer and place them back to back so that the uh, the bulb is facing up here and it's facing down on the back side so it, it, it connects and it's flat basically. Line the two holes up and then use the other rubber band over the wick and over the other uh, thermometer. So this is going to be the wet bulb. It's got the wick on it. The dry bulb is the other one. Put those two back together and use the rubber band to hold them together there. Make sure this hole lines up. Here's flipping over so you can see the other side. So I've just got the rubber band holding the dry bulb to the wet bulb. So the wet bulb is behind, holes are lined up. Take the screw and then place it back into the stick and use the Phillips head screwdriver to screw it all the way down, uh, tight enough so it stays there, but loose enough so that it swings around freely. I always put the wet bulb down because, um, and even though the instructions have the wet bulb up, I like it down, which means you're going to hold this stick and I'll show you how that is. Uh, wet bulb down so that when it's wet, it doesn't leak by gravity and get the dry bulb wet. So the dry bulb's on the other side. I'll show you that. So here it is together. So just the stick on one side. So looking at the bottom, there's the wick being held on by a rubber band. The rubber band's holding both of them together. Screws holding those guys together. I've got this up. There's the screw and there's the dry bulb on the top side. Uh, so the way that this is going to work is that you're going to be able to hold this stick and then this thing's going to go around and around and around just as you spin it. So the way the sling psychrometer works in action is that you, you get this wet and I'll go through the instructions a little bit more in a second. You get this wet, not dripping wet, just damp. Um, we'll get the temperature so that it's the same on the top and the bottom. And then when you sling it, here's me slinging it around. You just hold it and it goes around in a circle like a propeller or a helicopter. You don't have to go super fast. Um, it just needs to go so that it's spinning around. You want wind moving across the surface and you do that by spinning the uh, psychrometer. So you're slinging it is what the official term is. A professional sling psychrometer. So if you come to my lab, I'll show you this one. This one is with uh, glass tubes. Sometimes they have mercury. These are alcohol thermometers again. Um, they're held in place with these little mounts, screw mounts there. You can see we've got a wick, a little rubber band that's holding it up. I wet this wick here. Here's the handle. I hold it sideways and it basically just rotates around again like a little helicopter there. Uh, so the difference between the professional sling psychrometer and the student grain sling psychrometer is that the one that you've got is just plastic um, and it, uh, it has every two degrees marked instead of every single degree mark. So how it works is you dampen the wet bulb. That's the one with the wick. Um, doesn't need to be dripping. Um, so you can just take a couple drops. You want to make sure that it's damp. So if you touch it, you want to go like, oh yeah, that's wet. Uh, but you don't want it to ring out. If you get it super wet, just kind of squeeze a little bit and get the uh, big drops to come out. 
um, and then you're good to go. The second thing is you want to make sure both the temperature of the wet bulb and the dry bulb are the same temperature. So if you look at the top and the bottom, if you wet it with um, water that's already warmed up to room temperature or the air that you're in, it's not going to change the temperature very much. But if it's coming out of a water faucet or out of a water bottle, it tends to be a lot colder. Easiest way to do this is without touching the dry bulb bulb, it's just putting your thumb uh, against the wet bulb and let the body heat of your hand warm up the, the liquid, that is the moisture that's on the wet bulb, until the temperature gets at or slightly above even the uh, temperature of the dry bulb. You want them to be the same temperature to start. So you record the temperature of the dry bulb, say it's 24 degrees Celsius. So 24 degrees, nice and hot. Um, then when both of them are 24 degrees, you take the stick and you twirl it around like a helicopter horizontally, so flat, and it just goes around and around and around. Don't hit anybody with it. Be careful of how much space it takes up, that you've got room to sling the sling psychrometer sort of thing. And then if some water flings off, it's not a big deal. We just want to make sure that it's not hitting the dry bulb. And so go about 60 seconds. So that seems, it's a long time, so time it. So round, 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 round it goes. Um, then when 60 seconds is up, stop spinning it and then immediately read and write down the wet bulb temperature. Should be a lot lower, so probably 18, 15, even 12 um, degrees Celsius. So it's going to drop down quite a bit. So what we really want this thing to do is we're going to get that temperature to drop on the wet bulb. Um, and that difference in dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature is going to give us relative humidity. How you actually read this chart. So it's kind of a crazy looking chart. So if you're used to like a box chart that's got lines this way, X and Y axis, this is sort of that, but this is a linear curve here. And so what you do is you find the dry bulb temperature along the bottom here. So say if mine was 24 degrees, there's, or my example, there's 24, five, and you come back, there's 24. So that line coming straight up there is your 24 degree mark. If my wet bulb temperature is 15 degrees, you come up to 15. You don't read this mark, you read this one. Okay, so that's where it's confusing. So that one comes off there. There's 20, comes off there. 25 comes off there. And so where these two cross each other, you're going to read the curved line. I'll show you a couple examples because once you see it in action, you can see how it works. Uh, you can also look at the bottom line difference between wet bulb and dry bulb temperature. Some of them are in charts. It's a little bit easier to read, but this is the one that's applied. So I'll show you how I read it. So here's my example right there is that the dry bulb is 20 and the wet bulb is 15. The wet bulb's always going to be the same or lower temperature than the dry bulb, always. So um, my wet bulb temperature is 15, so the red line coming in there, the dry bulb is the blue line coming up. So as they cross, I'm going to see whatever this chart, this line is here, I'm going to go all the way up there and look, there it is. So you see it's sitting at 60. Um, so all the way up there. If for some reason the wet bulb and the dry bulb is 20, so it's 20 and 20 it meets right there, and that is 100% relative humidity. So there was no evaporation that happened on the wet bulb, so the temperature stays the same. All the way to super dry air, and it scales all the way down there, all the way down to 2% or 0%, uh, the amount of moisture that's in the air, which is really important. In this example, you can see that it's 60, uh, uh, relative humidity is 60%. Another example, so let's say, you know, more realistically, you don't get these nice even round numbers there. Say the dry bulb is 26, so there's 25, you go up one, there's 26, and then the wet bulb is 17, so there's 15, 16, 17. Follow that line this way, follow that line up that way. They connect right there really close to this one, so there's 40. And then you just estimate for some reason, if you got like one that's halfway between, that'd be 45 or 44, but you can estimate the best that you feel comfortable with. It's just slightly above, you can give that 41%, so you can do that sort of thing. This is to give you a ballpark, a quick measurement of what's going on in the atmosphere. So remember to read it at the right angle if you remember from temperature. So when you're looking at a temperature, make sure that you're looking at it perpendicular to the top of the liquid. You want to be perpendicular to the top of the liquid and then you're reading it properly. If it's at an angle or at a slope, you might actually get a false reading. You didn't read it correctly. Remember not to touch the bulb. Um, so you can, you can touch the wet wick to try to warm up that water, but try not to get the other temperature to be affected. So really quick, how does it work? Um, basically what's going on is when water evaporates. Uh, we, uh, water will evaporate when wind blows across it. It creates a low pressure. It's um, the low pressure caused by wind or advection is our fancy way of saying it. The evaporation pulls heat energy 
away from the body that had the moisture. So it takes, um, so from zero degrees to 100 degrees Celsius is the amount of energy uh, takes, um, the amount of energy it takes is 100 calories, okay? So 100 calories to go from a heat energy from zero to 100 degrees Celsius. To go from 100 degrees, uh, so liquid into vapor, so to take it into, to go from a liquid to a gas, it takes 540 calories to move that energy. So this energy is pulling that much heat. This is why um, if you blow on your hand or a hot drink, it will cool it off because you're actually pulling heat energy away from it by causing a low pressure across the surface. As you do the sling psychrometer, the wet bulb is evaporating moisture. As long as it's wet, it will evaporate moisture. The dry bulb has no moisture, so even though wind's blowing across it, nothing's evaporating. So the dry bulb will stay the same, same temperature as the air temperature as long as you haven't gotten it damp in any way. The wet bulb will actually start evaporating in a relationship between 100% to 0% relative humidity. With 100% relative humidity, it means that the moisture is there's as much moisture as you can have in the air, so nothing's going to evaporate. So the wet bulb doesn't drop very much. This is why when you're in a, a really humid day or the relative humidity is really high, and you're playing basketball or whatever, it seems like you're sweating like crazy or even just standing still and you're sweating like crazy. That's because your body's trying to regulate its own temperature by sweating, producing moisture on your skin that can then evaporate. If it's a, a lower relative humidity day or a drier day, you're still gonna sweat as necessary. It's just evaporating faster and you don't get wet. You don't feel wet because it's evaporating very quickly. Um, and it's definitely related to the relative humidity. Uh, one of the ways that this will play out, and you'll see this, is our heat index, is what's it really like if your body can't evaporate moisture. The heat index is, this is what the temperature is, it's like it's, you know, you're playing basketball and it's 98 degrees Fahrenheit outside, even though it's only in the 80s, it's because the relative humidity is really hot, or you're running, or you're mowing the lawn, or you're doing something outside. Uh, is, is if your body can actually do it. So uh, that's basically how it works. The wet bulb is going to evaporate. When it evaporates, that, that energy is going to leave the bulb. Um, and that energy that leaves the bulb is going to cool off the bulb temperature. The temperature in the bulb is going to drop. And so we'll be able to read that in the gauge. The difference in temperature or the uh, uh, depression, if you will, of temperatures between the dry bulb and the wet bulb is gonna give you what the relative humidity is in the air. And you'll find that the relative humidity varies even inside large rooms, in different rooms, inside, outside, all that sort of stuff. And I'm sure you'll do that in your exercises. But that's how the sling psychrometer works and how you put it together. Hope you enjoyed my little review and I'll be back with another one.